All right. Yeah. This is a Patreon request from Zenobia. Um, and yeah, well, actually, there was a lot of information that come with this. But all Freddie Mercury. Um, what influenced Freddie Mercury? I think he said, that's where Freddie got the Scalamouche, Scalamouche. Can you do the Fandango? Scalamouche is a clown thing. Said. But anyway, this is Mario Del Monaco. Uh, res, Resita Vesti La Giuba Il Pagliacci Live Tokyo. I'd probably butchered that pronunciation, but yeah. Let's go. Look at the breath control. You see how quickly his chest is. Again, breath control. How he managed to do that big long note, pause for just a second and carry on. This is Scaramouche. So this is Scaramouche. Scaramouche. Can you do the fine dango? That's Scaramouche. The dressing as a clown. At first I was thinking, is he a soldier? And then I've seen his face painted. And obviously, yeah, it's half done in the makeup of a clown. Now that makes sense.
So I was thinking then, because I've never seen someone incorporate, he incorporated both laughing and crying into that. Um, so Scalamouche, the sad clown. Because you hear, well, not all comedians, but a lot of comedians have that dark underlying thing about them. A dark underlying sadness to them. Even though their job is like, take uh, English, old English comedian Tommy Cooper. Literally, there is not, even people that met him when there wasn't a camera around, were like, he, he was just, con he was on 100% of the time. He wanted to make people laugh. And, and especially, I think, in them days, not so much now, but if people, not so much now because of podcasts and things where people can go on and talk about whatever. Um, and in a podcast setting, you don't need to be funny every minute. And people that do, you kind of feel like they're forcing it anyway. But, um, but yeah, in terms of um, that thing, so I'm guessing it's the kind of, like the drama laughing mask, the laughing sad mask, the comedy and tragedy, how comedy and tragedy go hand in hand with each other. Um, that's what I was kind of picking up, the clap, the sad clown, literally, there's the saying, um, the tears of a clown. Um, so that's the kind of vibe I was getting. From that, at first, yeah, at first I was thinking, because I wasn't actually sure, thinking about the email, now he's saying that, that that this is the scene, but I didn't know whether this was the scene, or like this was the same thing Freddie, or it was just the person who wrote it, and another thing, do you know what I mean, but now, yeah, so that was um, Scalamouche the Clown, Scalamouche, Scalamouche, can you do the Fandango? Thunderbolt of light being very, very frightening. Are you sleeping, girl? But yeah. Um, oh. Oh. Oh, snuggle down. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. It always is. I mean, it goes without saying with opera. Very impressive. Always, vocally, always. Um, and for Freddie as well, actually saying that, for Freddie, a lot of them movements that uh, they were making is almost was almost Freddie-ish, the way he performs with his arm thing. And the, um, yeah. Watching that, definitely, if I think Freddie has opera, not only in his voice, but in his movement on stage. Yeah, because actually saying that, I remember saying it was almost like a, a ballet, but not ballet, because I think it was really clear when we watched George Michaels do Somebody to Love. And um, when George Michaels moved, it was feminine. But with Freddie, there's, it's very mas it's a very masculine performance you get from Freddie, very strong. Um, physically strong presence he has on stage. Another one who's similar is Morrissey. For as kind of fey and as delicate as Morrissey is, he's a big bovine gentleman. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.